I mean, just recently, the only thing that really matters in my life is just is phone. Um, I find that when I'm behind the camera and I'm out there on set or you know, on location, it's the only time. It's the only time I actually feel alive. Editing and and uh, story storyboarding, of course also feel quite important to me but the main sort of practice that keeps me sane at the moment is, is filming. I think that more people need to find what makes them passionate and what makes them want to get out of bed at 4am in the morning. Go to sleep girl. I'm filming. Now. Okay. Filming, they just need to approach that a bit more vibrantly, I think, in their lives. Um, more and more, I see, I see kids are not giving a shit. You know, they celebrate, they celebrate not caring or getting zeros in their tests. You know, they sell their idiocy as a trait to be uh, wanted and acquired and approached for. But, you know, I think they're all right. I, I just, yeah, when I was in, when I was young, in uh, high school, I just gave up at one point. I just thought, why, why, should, why should I care at all anymore? You know, it's all. I saw sort of like a joke, isn't it? I mean, it's just... School used to be about, you know, uh, old wise men would have this knowledge from, you know, generations. For instance, there would be plant A and plant B, and one of them is poisonous. And if no one knows which one is poisonous, someone's going to have to get poisoned. But the thing is, from then on, no one has to get poisoned, because we know that plant A was poisonous and it killed Ted. And plant B isn't poisonous. So, you know, then I tell my son, plant B isn't poisonous, eat plant B. My son grows old and he's the only one with that knowledge left. So that's, I know, how school started. He would sit the kids down and say, kids, plant A is poisonous, plant B is not. This is how you identify plant B and plant A. Now, plant B is very similar to plant C, which is worse than both of them. But this is how you differentiate them. That was school. It was handing on knowledge. And then I guess over the years, you know, the knowledge got more complicated, like buildings and drawings and writing systems, which is another form of teaching. And, uh, you know, as it got more complicated, it grew, you know, more the population grew. You couldn't have this one-on-one -on -one experience anymore. So we had to devise systems to, you know, judge how well a person knows a topic so we can determine whether or not they should be allowed to go or then go on into the world and teach this topic. I think it's there where the problem started because you see it now became less about passing on the knowledge more about ensuring that people achieved a mark because if they achieve that mark that means they had the knowledge and you know that's actually you know that's all fair and good except then the methods you choose to to teach them you know that's where the curriculum comes in you know you can achieve top mark if you tick these boxes i might be able to tick these boxes but I'm, i won't retain any information i got an a on a math test in in year eight i got i got there's something like 35 out of 35 i got full marks i can't remember a bloody thing from that math test it's gone isn't that saying something it shouldn't i mean obviously the test isn't the end of the information obviously because i haven't been practicing it won't retain it. That's the thing. It doesn't teach us to want to practice things. It teaches us to want to get the A and that's it. It's gone forever. So yeah, obviously, you know, I ended up just not giving a shit about classes or, you know, grades or anything. Just didn't feel passionate about it. A few things I did feel passionate about, just didn't give a care about anyway, because, you know, I was a teenager. That's how we are. But eventually, I think that I realised... I was paying. I was paying for school, so why why go if I'm just not gonna bother about anything?
and that's that's where I reached, you know, where I am now making films. I finished school, didn't really think about the ATAR, I got a pretty good one though, 89. And, uh, you know, I, I, I took a four month gap. I wanted to take a year, my parents said four months, so I took four months, went to India. I uh, read a lot there, I, you know, I did, I did some filming there, so I'd have some, some material to pull out if I ever needed it. When I came back to Australia, I uh, went and moved to Melbourne, worked my arse off, worked my absolute arse off. I was just, you know, very disciplined. Went to school, got really good grades, but I changed the system so that the grades wasn't the final point. It was the process of learning what I needed to learn because all the information is there. Don't get me wrong, the teachers have the information, they have the knowledge, and they know how to pass it on, they know how to make it count. It's just you, it's, it comes down to you. If you don't, make school work for you it's not gonna work no one can make school work for you you know they say you can you can't you just you have to find a way that it works you know they say school's not for everyone you know you, you drop out and find your own way fuck off no one does that and if they do you know you've heard about them steve's jobs you only hear about the ones who make it don't you guess what i've heard about the ones that don't make it. you know what they're doing they're still working in hospitality and don't get me wrong hospitality is a noble it, albeit grueling and degrading profession, but it actually works for some people. Some people like hospitality. Don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to say you're a bad person for lacking hospitality. I just don't understand how your brain works. No, you know, I think that hospitality for yourself is fine. I can clean my own dishes and make my own food, but for 10, 10 hundred people a day, you know, and they're all giving me shit about it taking more than three minutes for them to have their artisan gluten-free, you know, kefir-infused turmeric coffee with cacao on top. Fuck off. Don't give me any of that shit. That's why I left hospitality. So that's why, you know, you go to school, you don't have to work in hospitality. Again, school does not mean you're not going to work in hospitality. There are plenty of people who do go to school and end up working in hospitality. My point is, if you go to school and if you make it work for yourself, which anyone can, you know, some people need to go to specialist schools, some people need to go, school is just life, school is learning. If you can make learning work for yourself, then you're done, you're sold, you can make it, you can make anything work. Thanks for listening.